If we want to send people to live on Mars, then we have to make sure that they can get there in one piece. And to do that, we have to deal with radiation. <music> is something that's often talked about in the media, often a big scare, but I find that it's not really often explained very well what it actually is and what it's affected in our bodies. So that's what I want to talk about today. What radiation is, where it comes from, how it does damage to our bodies, and finally how we can deal with it on journeys to other planets and eventually even living on the surface of Mars. So what is radiation? So simply put, it's just a form of energy being transmitted from one place to another place. And it does that in the form of subatomic particles or tiny packets of light called photons. So to, il to illustrate this, I've drawn a typical atom here, an atom of carbon-12, which is what most of our bodies are made of. It consists of a number of particles, protons, which I've drawn in red here, neutrons, which I've drawn in blue, and a delocalised cloud of electrons surrounding the nucleus, which I've drawn in black here. So this is fine, this is just a usual atom, it's perfectly happy. But if I decide to mess with this atom and add two more neutrons to it, then it changes to an entirely different type of atom. It changes to an atom of carbon-14. And this is unstable. It's got too much energy and it wants to get rid of that energy by any means possible. So we call this a radioactive nucleus. And so, historically, there are three ways that were discovered of how a nucleus could get rid of this excess energy. The first and most common way is it can emit a particle of light called a photon in order to send some energy flying off. And this is called a gamma ray. So the nucleus can send a gamma ray flying out. So that's a quite common way for a nucleus to get rid of some energy. But there's two other possibilities. Now, one really clever way that a nucleus might try is if you see this nucleus now contains more neutrons than protons. So by using some, a really clever trick called the weak nuclear force, it can actually change one of these neutrons into a proton. But the problem now is that protons are charged particles. They're positively charged and a neutron doesn't have any charge. So that means that the nucleus, it looks like it's created charge out of nothing. And the universe doesn't allow that. So it creates a negatively charged particle, an electron, to balance that out. And it sends the electron flying out of the nucleus. And we call this a beta particle. Technically a beta minus particle because it's negatively charged. So that's the second possibility. But if a nucleus grows extremely large, then it can try something else entirely. It can actually get two neutrons and two protons together and eject them all in one go. So it sends basically a helium nucleus outside. Two protons, two neutrons. And this here is called an alpha particle. So these are the three types of radiation that were identified historically. But in space, there's another fourth kind of radiation that I also want to mention for completeness. And this is just a proton travelling on its own at almost the speed of light. So these four types of radiation together are what we see and generally refer to as radiation. So I've described this in terms of a nucleus which is unstable and which is decaying. But in space we have an empty vacuum. There's no radioactive isotopes in space. So a natural question might be, where is the radiation actually coming from in space? And to answer that, it comes from two places generally. It comes from the Sun, and it comes from the rest of the galaxy. The Sun is continuously sending out a stream of protons and electrons across the solar system in what we call the solar wind. But every now and then, a huge explosion called a solar flare or a coronal mass ejection can erupt from its surface sending out streams of X-rays, gamma rays, protons, electrons and other particles across the solar system. And that's a real risk for astronauts. And these events aren't even really that rare. Depending on where you are in the 11 year cycle that the Sun follows, there can be a coronal mass ejection, anything from once every five days 
to three or more times every single day. And as to the radiation coming from outside of our solar system, we see what we call galactic cosmic rays, which are about 85% of protons and 15% of these alpha particles. And they're travelling at absolutely huge energies. And in fact, we don't really even know for certain what in nature can make particles that high energy. I mean, our best guess at the moment is that once a star explodes, it leaves some magnetic fields behind in the cloud that remains, and these particles travel through the field, get accelerated in the magnetic field, and then shoot off in a direction. That's our best guess of how they're produced, but we're not entirely certain. All we know is that some of these particles have 40 million times more energy than we can produce in the most powerful particle colliders here on Earth. OK, so there are these particles and photons flying about through space, but they're a lot smaller than atoms. So you could say, well, what harm can they do to us? Because our bodies are made of 10 to the power of 28 different atoms. That's 10 with 28 zeros. So surely they can't do that much harm. And if we were just a block of atoms, then that would be correct. They wouldn't really do that much damage. But actually, our bodies are much more delicate than that. They're extremely complex and intricate machines with some very ingenious processes going on inside of them. So to illustrate the harm that radiation can do, I've drawn a strand of DNA, as you can see here. And we're going to send a cosmic ray proton flying through it. So the first thing that it might do is it could break some of the bonds holding DNA together. Such as that. But much more worrying is it could send an atom flying away whilst your DNA is in the process of making a copy of itself. And that can cause your DNA to make an error, make a wrong copy. And one error on its own, eh, it's not going to cause that much harm. But if there are tens of billions of these protons flying through your DNA at any one time, the errors can gradually build up until we have what we call a mutation, which is when your DNA has changed to such an extent that on the larger scale it changes how your body operates. And that can lead to cells replicating out of control. And that's what we call a cancer, which is extremely dangerous to astronauts in space. So we've learnt a lot today. We've seen that radiation is comprised of four main types, three subatomic particles, here, and gamma rays. We've also seen where it comes from, explosions on the surface of the sun, and from the remnants of dead stars out in our galaxy. And finally, we've looked at how it can cause mutations in our DNA. Next time, we're going to be looking at how much radiation it's safe to expose astronauts to, and what steps they can take to limit their exposure on the way to Mars and living on the surface, and how they can live there safely for the rest of their lives. See you then.